Hey everybody, uh, good morning. Here I is, I was in a nursery. I snuck into the back room. So let's make a video about the cactus dungeon before I go ahead and get 86. Really quick though, look at this beautiful assemblage of uh, native Sonoran desert wildflowers here. We're at the plants, uh, plants for the Southwest nursery here in Tucson, Arizona. Pinch them in Perry eyes, this guy with the money shots right there. Five fused petals, tree in the bottom, two on the top. Of course, it's pinch them in, you got the uh, opposite leaves. Rather glabrous here. Penstemon's a big ass genus, a lot of species in it. Uh, you know, deserts in North America have made their home. I mean, they're everywhere. You get them in Texas, you get a couple in the Midwest, but uh, they've had a, you know the most diversity in the Southwest and in Mexico. All right, let's get into the uh, let's get into the dungeon right here. Okay, so here we is. We're in a cactus dungeon, real quick. Now you can see you got a lot of cactus here. Okay, you're basically taking a bath in the cacti. All right. If you want, if you want to envision it like that, but uh, we're going to start off with something that's not a cactus, but it's in the same order. Them, it's in uh, Caryophyllales. It used to be in the family Portulacaceae. Now it's in the family Anacampserotaceae. Hope that's due to some uh, um, good uh, molecular work, some good DNA work, and not just uh, you know some whimsical armchair botanist. Either way, this is a species in the genus Avonia, and this is a uh, native to uh, South Africa. Okay, to the southern, uh, at least to the southern half of the. The, uh, African continent and there's quite a few in South Africa you get them in the Namibia too look at what you got going you got two different species here look at these tiny guys these are probably rather old plants look at it you got the scales looks like a little tentacle like you stuck a squid upside down on the ground okay look at this guy different species right here you got you got look at the papery scales okay these might even be oh what's going on here these might even be uh, modified leaves Papery scales, you know, white scales to uh, mitigate the effect that had harsh uh, ultraviolet radiation in their sun-exposed barren environments. Also to reflect some of that light. Remember, we want to keep the leaf temperatures down when we're plants growing in the desert. We want to keep that leaf temperature down so it doesn't interfere with our photosynthesis, okay? And so it doesn't cook our ass, okay? That's why you got to use lotion if you're on the desert too, all right? I don't care if you use eustrin. I don't care if you use the CeraVe. You slatter yourself up with some of the nasty shit with the fragrances in it i don't care okay i don't care if you smell like a suburban housewife just put that lotion on your ass so you don't get all all dry and ashy maybe use some sunscreen too but i really like the uh, white long sleeve shirts with the uh the big ass hats. anyway there you go vonia look at these these are really hard to keep alive really hard to keep alive in cultivation they just you know unless you got a hot dry climate for them they just do not do well you know they rot real easy they grow real slow here we go, here we go. Whole table full of living rock cacti in the genus Areocarpus. This is uh, Areocarpus retusus, and over here you got uh, Areocarpus, Are Areocarpus bleh, excuse me, a scaphirosus. I've been to the habitat where these grow in the Wave of Leon. You'll be standing right on top of them. You don't even know they're there. They're much more gray in habitat. They're, uh, you know, they blend in perfectly with, with the, the calcareous shale in which they grow. You know, they just basically grow in, in shale talus. In the Sierra Madre, Oriental. Oh, there we go. Look at this Epithelantha bokeh. Look, they got the paintbrush so they can help them bang. Epithelantha bokeh. I just seen this in West Texas, but they were nowhere. They were like at 120 at the size of this. Obviously, you know, cacti fare a lot better in cultivation where you can give them what they need, give them the moisture, the nutrients, all that shit, you know, make them thrive. But uh, this is, I mean, you'll never see a plant, at least I never have, like this in Habitat in West Texas. You know, it's just far too dry, far too arid. I gotta do this, wrap this up before I get kicked out of here. To, you know, the fucking Yahoo's talking. All right, look at this. Here we got Turbinocarpus, okay? Turbinocarpus is a large genus, okay? Large genus of Mexican cacti. Notable among them, okay, is this guy especially, Turbinocarpus subterraneus, okay? Subterraneus anus. Look at that. Look at this guy. Notable. Look at this. Look at the stems right here. Look at that. This is stem. Okay. You, you might ask yourself, why is it like that? Like a snake? Well, that's because normally in habitat, this would just be coming up true to limestone, talus, true to rocks and with the shit. This would all be covered with the rocks. You wouldn't even see them. Okay. But still, there's enough vasculature in that, uh, that thin tentacle-like stem to where they go into the ground. So that if you water them, they get a little bit of rain. It still goes through there and it, boom, it pumps up that, uh, that's above ground stem. So much so that, you know, remember cacti are just little batteries. They got all the nutrients, all the moisture and shit that they need. And they could just uh, sit on it, you know, and as long as, you know, they could, some, some cacti just will lose their roots, they'll die, they're just a little battery sitting there. And then, uh, you know, when conditions are uh, uh, conducive to growth again, then they send their roots out again. Look at that flower, money shots. Look at this going off. God damn, look at it. Stigma's open. 
Stigma's open. Looks like the Jesus. What the fuck is going on over? I can't understand. I remember I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here quick before I get kicked out. So there's the uh, there's that white stigma open. You could see looks like the uh, well. There's still pollen coming off those pollen grains, but some cacti are protandrous. So that stigma, that little white uh, cloud, won't even open up. They'll, they'll just be releasing pollen first, and then that cloud opens up afterwards. Look at these goddamn aerial carpets. These goddamn aerial aerial carpets. Living rock cacti with the two pages up top. Most ridiculous species that, but that goes to this guy. Aerial carpus cochu bianus. The fuck is probably named after. This is why you just shouldn't name plants after people. I'm a staunch believer in it. Really pisses me off when that happens. Look at all those trichomes, all those white, white hairs, those white ass trichomes. There's a grafted one on a knob. Yet another turbinocarpus. This is turbinocarpus valdezianus. Valdez's anus. You know, when I was in military school, as you can, I got thrown in a couple of reform schools. We had a sergeant major called Sergeant Major uh, Velez, and he used to yell at us for smoking cigarettes on top of the urinals. You know, we do that so we could blow the smoke in the vents, but you could still smell it, you know, all the way down the halls and with this shit. We had a really fun time there. I got thrown out after about a year and a half. Anyway, look at this. You got the fruits coming up right there, and you got all those uh, those scales, those those tri those scale like trichomes on top of those tubercles. Again, reflecting that UV light, keeping it, the leaf epidermal tissue uh, cool, like cool enough to photosynthesize at least. You know, these, I mean, really, you just see millions of years of adaptation to hot, dry limestone, limestone, okay, keyword there, limestone environments, thus the white helps them blend in. You see, uh, you know, millions of years worth of evolution evident in the morphology of these uh, tender bastards over there. Look, there's a little fruit. These are mostly stock plants. So what they're gonna do, they're gonna use a paintbrush to help them bang, and then they're gonna, you know, get a fruit afterwards, take the little seeds out, which in this case are little black poppy seeds, and they'll grow more of them. And this is good because uh, a lot of these cacti are really fucked in habitat. Habitat's getting destroyed, and uh, you know, people are just poaching them like hell. Boom, there we go, another species of turbinocarpus. This is a uh, Cranes' anus turbinocarpus, the turbinocarpus cranesianus. Apparently named after a guy named Cranes. Yeah, just they're naming all these goddamn plants after people. It's so fucking really pet peeve. Anyway, also I misspoke in my last uh, little clip right there. Turbin I, I misidentified the spines as trichomes. Spines and trichomes are much different. Uh, cactus spines are uh, axillary leaf buds. Trichomes are just outgrowths of the epidermal tissue. And what you have here are spines. But, uh, you know, cacti can, of course, have both. You can see the trichomes evident there beneath the spines. It looks like a little Q-tip. Okay, and again, we have that uh, elongated growth that and that's because these would be poking up through the limestone talus okay we got one money shot right here look at that so much goddamn diversity so much variation on a theme of a photosynthetic succulent stem with cam photosynthesis and uh most often closed stomata during the uh, hot dry periods of the day you know they take in their co2 at night look at that plump aerial carpus over there Okay, and here we're talking about Aerocarpus retusus, relatively common plant in Nuevo Leon and the Sierra Madre. Okay, this is a this is a pretty old specimen. I've seen them, uh, you know, in habitat, growing on the limestone soils with Leucophyllum frutescens and Pinus sembroides. You know, at about four thousand feet elevation. Oh, look, there's a dead guy too. See, Aerocarpus get that uh, kind of beige, piss-colored uh, cuticle. Uh, it's so evident when they die. You know, when they just lose all their their chlorophyll once it breaks down. Anyway, again. These don't have uh, spines. No, but they, they do. Maybe they do. They got little spines on top of those tubercles. But uh, you can see they got a lot of trichomes. And these, these recess into the soil like uh, almost all the Aerocarpus do. Okay, Aerocarpus, I believe, has upwards between 6 and 10 species. May, maybe a dozen. I forget. But uh, Aerocarpus retusus, these will just be, and I've seen huge mounds, you know, colonies of these, you know, as big around as this entire tray. Okay, now we're going to fuck around with the genus Astrophytum, which is one of my personal favorites. And, and uh, you know, this, this guy right here, well, these, these are two different species. This is uh, uh, Astrophytum myriostigma, and this is Astrophytum asterius, native to South Texas. But this is a genus that has been, uh, this species especially, has been heavily tampered with genetically uh, by many growers, especially in Japan. They love them over there in Japan. They're big in Japan. They, uh, you know, will selectively breed them for those uh, enhanced uh, those enhanced white polka dot specklings of, uh, of trichomes uh, on the uh, on his stem right there. Okay, a little sea urchin cactus. Now, this is a very endangered species uh, in South Texas where it's native, Astrophytum asterius. There's, there's by far 100 times more in cultivation than there are in habitat. You know, and as the, the habitat in Rio Grande, uh, you know, near Rio Grande City and Stark County, 
uh, etc. Antimolipus, but especially Starkonic, continues to get screwed by cancerous, tumorous, obnoxious urban sprawl, for which there seem to be no constraints whatsoever. Okay, we're just going to put a shopping center and McMansions over everything. Uh, as they continue to lose more habitat, cultivation and projects like this, where you know they got stock plants and they're just you know pollinating them by a because this is an obligate outcrossing plant. They're pollinating them with the paintbrushes. They produce some fruits. They get hundreds, thousands of seeds. Some Maybe they sell some of the seeds. Maybe they uh, you know, grow more to sell them. This is very important for ex situ conservation. Look at this uh, Look at this species of Astrophytum right here. Holy shit. Okay, let's, uh, let's get up close and personal with the Astrophytum myriostigma. Okay, look at how goddamn covered in a, in a little white polka dots these are. Just, just covered in these scales covered in these uh, trichomes you know and again it's just a result of selective breeding the same way that humans can breed uh, you know or humans can create the cultivars of a brassica species remember kale cauliflower broccoli they're all the same species and that they can create the chihuahuas and pit bulls and goddamn doberman pinchers from canis lupus from the wolf you could do the same thing of course with plants and that's what's uh, been done with uh, this species especially the entire genus of astrophytum really but uh look at it and they're just these are all uh you know, you just, you grow a hundred, you select the ones with the traits you like, then you, you breed those, you know, cross-pollinate those, and then you get the seed of those, grow a hundred more, select the ones that have the traits you like, etc. You eventually weed out the ones that don't have the traits you like, and boom, you get this. Look at all those goddamn trichomes. Bring the old hand lens out, get up close and personal. So what happened, uh oh, the fucking lens fucked up with this. So what happened with this? You could see them right there. Look at those, look. Look, you, you got, get up close, looks like someone, you know, Looked like mealybugs almost. What was happening with this was Astrophytum myriostigma, variety nudum. A Japanese guy uh, who just loved the shit out of plant uh, was uh, breeding them, you know. Uh, and uh, nudum actually doesn't have any trichomes. It's just uh, completely bare, okay. And uh, and suddenly he was breeding them, and and one popped out that were just completely flecked in white. And uh, and then he just started breeding those. So th whatever this is, it must be a recessive allele. It's not a dominant allele. Because they were dormant in the population, and then through excessive, uh, you know, breeding, he finally hit the jackpot, knocked on one, got two recessive alleles. They were, they were homozygous for the recessive allele. You're going to have to look this up if you don't know what I'm talking about, because you, you really should notice, you fuck. All right, this is, this is the fucking base of the food chain. This is, this is how life on earth works. So he got, they were homozygous for the recessive allele, and boom, you get these wonderful, magnificent bastards. And, you know, he's probably making a killing on these, uh, you know, selling these, you know, to... Uh, out of cactus collectors and you know people that just uh, fancy him with the shit the the science behind some of this cactus breeding is fascinating you know and, and the thing to think about is you know if this guy can do it in his backyard at what point would nature do it in habitat You didn't think we were going to end up talking about homozygous, heterozygous, recessive alleles, dominant alleles, and all that shit today, did you? Huh? You just thought you were going to get some flashy eye candy. So there's Nudum. These are the same species, but uh, this is obviously homozygous for the recessive allele. Look at that. Look. Not a guy. Well, you got some. I guess you got some tiny. Looks like the, a lot of that's dust, but you got some tiny. Actually, maybe not. You only got a couple clusters of trichomes on there. So there you go, there's Nudum. And that's what uh, this guy was breeding when these guys uh, suddenly popped up in a seed bench. You know, the Japanese do everything perfect. How do they do it? I mean, really, I, you know, I wanna go there someday. I would love to go to Japan. You take me to Japan, take me to Japan with you. So there you go, there's some, uh, there's some large, old growth Astrophytum myriostigma. So much healthier than they would look in a in habitat too. In habitat cacti really get beat to shit. You know, they really take a beating. Lots of scarring, lots of uh, you know, that beige tissue. You know, you get a couple dents from racks falling from things pecking at you. Okay, and then of course we're still in the astrophytum dungeon right here. Look at this. These are astrophytum. This is astrophytum caput medusae. Alright, and this uh this grows in Tamaulipas just over the border from Texas. Uh, I, have a, I have a couple friends who've actually seen this in habitat, but uh, you know where they grow, uh, I've heard is somewhat heavily infested with narcos. And the people that told me that uh, are people that tend to take risks anyway. You know they're rather reckless to begin with, and if they're telling me that, uh, I would believe them. You know, there's a lot of people that, uh, you know, especially in the states, who get scared of Mexico, 
maybe not so reasonably, but the, the person who told me this actually lives in Mexico and said it is somewhat of a hot area to be. But uh, these are young ones, they get, you know, these stems get upwards, I believe, of, you know, 16 inches sometimes, maybe, I don't know, maybe not that big, I've, you know, but either way, these are much smaller than they would be as adults. So, uh, you know, and they just, I mean, I'd love to see the habitat on these, but you can still see they got those, uh, all those trichomes, those trichomes dotting them, just looking like little little white scales in a, uh, looks like a subterranean, somewhat subterranean apical mary stem. So that's where all, that's where all the magic's happening. That's where the mitosis is happening, the, the active cell division. What do we got here? We got some grafting. We got some areocarpus grafted to uh, what looks like trichocereus, which uh, is a, uh, south american and of course areocarpus are all north american but uh either way look at this i'm surprised they got these here copia poas these are from uh these are from the atacama desert area these are from south america which generally has much cooler deserts than we get in north america i'm surprised they're able to keep these alive here a lot of the, a lot of the uh, south american uh cacti especially from the atacama from northern chile etc just don't like hot temperatures because it's not a hot desert you know I, when i was down there i realized that i said this is just an extremely dry arid place this is not, you know, a hot desert. It's not like Phoenix. So you take them to Phoenix or like Austin in the summer and they'll just melt. But there you go. Copiapoa. Big ass genus. Entirely endemic to Chile. Oh my God. Who doesn't like uh, members of the Opuntia subfamily, the prickly pear subfamily? If you've been watching the videos long enough, you've probably heard me talk about some of the subfamilies of cacti. You got Cactoidae, which a lot of those guys are in. And you got Opuntioidae, which the prickly pears and these guys are in. This is a species in a genus Tephrocactus. And what you're looking at on top of those uh, uh, tubercles and aerials are uh, glockids. And glockids are a trademark. They're a synapomorphy of the Opuntioidae, the prickly pear subfamily. And they're fucking terrible. They're, I mean, I, I love this subfamily, but those are really... They're, I would take a spine going two inches into my forearm or my ass uh, any day over being, you know, having... 500 of those tiny little glockid fiberglass hairs, you know, stuck in my leg, uh, my face, my arm, all of which have happened, okay? Maybe one day I'll get them in my urethra. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see where life takes me. Here we go. Epithelantha micromeris. Another species I just saw in uh, West Texas. Very common on the limestone, as you might have guessed. Again, the evolution on limestone, the few million years it's spent on limestone and limestone habitats is evident in, evident in its morphology because it's so goddamn white. Looks like a golf ball, all right? Epithelantha bokei looks like a golf ball with a foreskin, but let's not talk about that right now. So this, this, uh, this, these individuals actually, this is Epithelantha micromeris, but it's somewhat disjunct from the Texas and Chihuahua desert population. These are from the Dragoon Mountains in Southern Arizona. Uh, it's mostly uh, uh, extrusive igneous rock. I think you, you get some intrusive igneous rock too. I think, actually, I think it's mostly intrusive igneous rock. It's mostly granite. So it's mostly igneous rock. But uh, you get a couple patches of limestone there, and on those limestone patches, uh, you get the epithelantha. Look at those flowers. Look at those gorgeous flowers and that uh, network of radial spines that uh, would help this blend in with that white limestone. Okay, and I, you know, I think, I think uh, the DNA work has shown that this is, this is, this diverged, it being so disjunct, so far removed from the Chihuahua desert population, that it is a, uh, Phylogenetically, you know, you could look at the genome and compare the ones that the Chihuahua desert population and this population, and they do indeed. You'll see some, uh, you compare those genetic barcodes, you will see some differences. They've been separated for, for a little bit of time. Okay, moving right along. The heat's died down. I'm not going to get 86 anytime soon. Uh, you think, uh, I think I'm safe for a few more minutes. Anyway, here's Luchtenbergia. Luchtenbergia is the genus here. And, uh, you know, I've grown these from seed. Uh, my plants are just a little bit younger than this. A little bit smaller than this they're about five or six years old this is actually can be a, a relatively sensitive cactus it, it doesn't like full bright exposed sun as much as the others it tends to need a little bit more moisture uh and oddly enough i mean you wouldn't guess this by looking at the morphology it almost looks like some sort of goddamn agave there's the uh, top of the tubercles up there the aerials and uh you got all kinds of tiny little trichomes right there coming out and uh and then you got these spines you wouldn't guess but this bastard is actually more it's it's most closely related to ferro cactus which are the barrel cactus ferro cactus of course is the genus of arizona barrel cactus you get quite a few species of ferro cactus uh in mexico arizona baja california uh southern california etc but it will this this uh, species of luchtenbergia will actually interbreed with the other uh, ferro cactus look at this look we got another uh look at that 
that's pretty odd on top of this uh, tubercle we have an entire new uh plant of forming the shit okay now let's uh before we wrap this up let's uh get a good money shot at those uh trichomes in between those individual tubercles of Luchtenbergia. look at it just draped draped in a beard of white trichomes you prick like a little toupee and these of course you know old growth i've seen a couple old growth specimens all red all redded and tattered and red and you know they, they can get upwards of you know up that tall maybe even a little bit bigger you know no idea how long they live again it's, you can't really date cacti was that a fruit that just fell off there you go there's a little fruit elongated uh, little fruit they just dry out then i wonder if there was any some cacti have dry fruits some cacti have uh, actual mealy uh you know edible fruits i mean all cactus fruits are all cacti fruits are edible but some are not necess necessarily palatable you know some will have you know spongy some will have just they'll dry out some will be uh, quite delicious and juicy. Okay, and we'll end with some money shots to this mammalaria right here. Actually, I'll give you a couple more money shots of different species. Nothing to help you calm down and quell the homicidal thoughts, keep the nausea down of uh, life, uh, you know, just normal reaction to life in modern day society. Nothing to help you keep that puke down, like looking at money shots of some wonderful cacti. Okay, even when they're not in bloom. Look at it, you got the areocarpus, you got the astrophytums, okay? Got some, uh, got some nudie shots right there. Got the turbinocarpus. What the fuck is going on there? Look at that. That multi-stemmed sassy bastard. Look at those stamens. Huh? Just ready to splooge. You know, you gotta you got respect these guys. Because, you know, if you, were, you could be standing in their habitat on top of them. You'd never see them. You'd never see them. They just blend in. So goddamn well. Oh. Just pure, pure cacti porn. Okay? Plus an avonia or two. You gotta love avonias as well. I'm gonna go to South Africa at some point, then uh, we'll show you, we'll show them to you in habitat with the money shots. Okay? I wonder what it'd be like to get arrested in South Africa. Maybe I'll have the pleasure of finding out. Look, we got a, we got a volunteer composite in there. That's a member of the sunflower family, that guy right there. Isn't that, isn't that odd? diaperia the diaper plant adult diapers depends another sponsor of this uh this program take me to a turbine carpus dungeon so i don't attack anybody and end up on the news take me to a turbine carpus dun that's all i got for you today go fuck yourself have a lovely uh, rest of your afternoon bye Look at this, yellow spine feral cactus. Look, you got the new growth. See how, see how they're soft. They're soft, soft freshies, softfreshies.com. Oh fuck, I can't even get in there. But if I could, I'd show you that those spines haven't even hardened off yet. They're kind of, they're kind of uh, gentle to the touch still, okay? They haven't been uh, bruised and better with the harsh reality of life and become spiny and mean as of yet. Oh, oh shit, oh shit, we've seen some good stuff down here. Aristolochia, Aristolochiaceae. One of the uh, more basal angiosperm families. The Dutchman's pipe. Just looks like a bunch of weedy bullshit on the ground. Get closer and you can you can see that uh, pretty unique flower. Probably uh, pollinated by fungus gnats. Aristolochia is a pretty badass genus, man. You got a lot of you got a lot of species in there. Some of them get massive, and a lot of them are hosts for uh, swallowtail butterflies. You know, yeah, I think there's quite a few species in this genus. Each each has their own specific. Uh, uh, butterfly that uh, uses them as a host plant and of course you know in those leaves you got a lot of quite a lot of uh, toxic compounds that's why the butterflies use them in the first place to bioaccumulate all those uh, all those poisons to keep uh, keep things from eating the butterflies okay I said I was done but I can't help myself I gotta show you this guy from Madagascar from uh, limestone outcrops in Madagascar Pachypodium brevicol Brevicol means short stem. Obviously, that's a no-brainer. You could see why it's called that. These are uh, another plant that rots really easily in cultivation. If you don't have the hot and dry, don't even bother with this plant, okay? It really, you know, if you're gonna, if you want to see this, it belongs in a museum, okay? If you're not in habitat, go, you know, give it to your local conservatory and have them grow it. Say, hey, you fucks, why don't you take care of this? Grow this for me so I can come see it, all right? Because you're not going to be able to give it what it is. You're not going to be able to give it that, uh, that hot and dry. But they got some tubes for sale if you want any. Look at this. Oleander family of Pastanaceae. Old world of Pastanaceae.